Hey everyone, it's Dr. Mike, the Bowtie Vet Guy. Today I'm going to answer some of your questions about being a veterinarian. I'm going to A the crap out of your cues. A lot of questions about private practice and how much time you actually spend working. I think the average uh, in the U.S. is somewhere, most people probably will work uh, 40 to 50 hours a week. If there isn't, say, an emergency clinic that's helping with emergencies, you may end up putting in 60 or 70 hours if you have a lot of emergencies. It just depends on where you live and what kind of medicine you're practicing. Of course, the more time you're putting in, the less time you have for leisure, uh, the less time you have for family. Many of my friends that started their own clinics really put a lot of time in at the front. In other words, when they first start their clinics, they put in tons of hours and tons of time, and then after it gets established, they can cut back a little bit and spend more time with their family. Um, and that's something that everybody has to figure out for themselves as to how much time they're gonna put in. Veterinarians do have a fairly high suicide rate, and I think it's because we tend to work and work and work very hard. We're used to being very, very good at what we do and being the best and working hard. And it's easy to work so hard that you can um, suffer from depression or compassion fatigue and so I think if you're thinking about your life and where you want to go with this to plan in that extra time to have um, some time for family and time for leisure. I put in um, I put in three long days and that leaves me with four days to do other things such as these videos for all of you and uh, time to do uh, stand-up comedy and to run marathons and do triathlons and to have friends and family over for drinks. A day in the life of a private practice veterinarian. Um, there is no typical day. They are very different. Things that we do every day, um, writing in records, calling people, talking to people, examining animals. Other than that, it's wide open. You never know what we're going to see, what kind of puzzle we're going to get. Is it going to be a dog that's been vomiting for a couple of days and eh, maybe just ate something that's really bad? Or maybe, maybe it's got a foreign object stuck in its stomach and we don't know which thing it's going to be. We have to try to figure that out. Um, maybe someday we'll be in surgery and maybe the next day we'll be sitting around calling people and answering all of their questions from their pet that was in the previous day. All of those things happen every day and every day is different. There are a couple of things that surprise me about private practice. One is how physically demanding it is. I am tired at the end of the day, walking around, picking up animals, kneeling down to feel the animals. I mean, I'm doing squats all day, so every day is leg day. And the second part is that it's emotionally draining every day. You have to be on because you don't know if the thing you're seeing is a happy little puppy or if it's something that is dying and needs your help immediately. And so emotionally and intellectually, you are on the whole day. So that was surprising to me how much the energy it took. The thing that we all hate to talk about but is part of the equation is money. It always comes into the equation. So part of my job is to have that discussion with people and think about like, okay, this is what we would love to do, but if this means you can't pay your rent next month, you probably shouldn't do it. Let's find another way to help you out as much as we can. And in some cases, there may be something we can do, but it's just not affordable. And so the only humane answer is euthanasia. And that does come up. Um, it's sad and it's frustrating, but it's part of real life. And we have to not judge people, but uh, give them as much support and help as we can for what they can afford. Thanks for watching. Please send in more questions so I can give you more answers.